guys, my name is Finus Hollis and this is an interview with travelers and my couch surfers. Today my guest, Hans from Belgium. How are you, Hans? Good, thank you very much. Please introduce yourself. I'm Hans from Belgium. Uh, I'm a designer, I'm 33, and I'm in Thailand for about six days now. Welcome to Thailand. Yeah, he is my uh, couch surfer. Um, He's my guest for uh, about um, three days, four days. Yes, three yeah, days. Yeah, three days now. And um, how was your how was your backhoe experience? Good. Uh, a few days ago, they stole my bank card and my money, so I, I had to leave my hostel because I, I couldn't pay for my hostel anymore. And one of her friends uh, was uh, couch surfing as well, so she so I asked her, "Can you give me a bed?" But she wasn't on a bed, she wasn't available, so uh, she contacted um, Fiona and she actually let me stay here even though she already had a couch surfing. How did you know about couch surfing by the way? Uh, I learned about couch surfing uh, on my first trip in 2008 and 2009, but I never used it because uh, people were just inviting me spontaneously, so yeah, I never sure. used couch surfing on itself. But the experience was the same, people would just invite you, let you stay, show you that new culture. Sure, and everything. Correct. And for your travel experience? Um, when I came back from New Zealand, I wanted to live there, but um, because of the financial crisis, I had to come back to Belgium. And eventually, I started uh, going back to school, studying more and more about design and art. And uh, eventually, I started my own company, but that wasn't it. I wanted a different life. So eventually, I quit my job, quit my house, uh, sold and gave yeah. much of my stuff. And now, I'm traveling in search of happiness. So, what happiness means to you? Um, having time to spend with people. Uh, I love designing. I'm probably never gonna stop that until the day I die. But uh, I just want to have time to spend with my friends, uh, to raise a family, uh, meet other people, learn. I don't want to work nine to five for six days a week until I retire, and then hopefully have some money to do what I never did. Yeah. I want to do it now. So, what is your worst unforgettable travel experience? The worst one was actually a few days ago, few when, ago right? when they stole my bank card because yeah. they stole my bank card and my money and at that point you know that you have money in your bank account but you can't access it anymore so you have to leave your hostel and everything and then it's a choice like am I going to sleep on the street or is somebody going to take me in and in the end this experience has been a very good one. It was only a hundred dollars that I that I that I lost, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get a new credit card, and everything is gonna be okay. But I met you and and Solange, and I learned so much about Thailand and um, about transgender people as well. And you're not just a transgender; you're also um, very into fashion and people and other cultures. Sure. So for that, I'm actually happy about losing the hundred dollars. <laughs> That's good, yeah. So in the end, like uh, I think the universe bring people together for a reason, and um, I think this one gives a way to like, okay, like I'm gonna give you this problem. Then it's up to you to realize it later, and then how you realize it turns into positivity. Yeah. So. yeah. In the end, the shit that I had in the past made me who I am, and made me decide that I can change my life right sure. now. I'm yeah. I'm still young. I can make a change. Mm -hmm. I don't. I shouldn't sit on my ass mm -hmm. because I can change my whole life completely. Sure. That's not because of the good things, that's because of the bad things that happen. Correct, correct. So in that way, yeah, I'm happy that they have. Why you have tattoo and it seems to you? Uh, most of my tattoos were done by people that I met during traveling. I started in a tattoo studio in Belgium and uh, I didn't know that much about it and she told me about Polynesian cultures mm -hmm. and Eventually she did one part of my arm and after that I wanted to do my back so I told her I want these cultures, I want this story in it but how exactly it's gonna look, that's up to you and from then on I decide less and less what's, what the design will be uh, I leave that to the artist I, I only pick artists who, who I like and who I have a connection with and that know their culture and when they do, then I tell them like, yeah, okay, you can do a piece, pick a part, just this is the reason why I want a tattoo from you, from your culture, and why this is the right time. But apart from that, 
Do your thing. That's amazing. Thanks to her, to the artist. Whoever yeah. artist you are, just that's really amazing. That's really cool. The first moment that you traveled and how was the feeling? That was cool because my first trip I arrived in Samoa. Oh, so this was your first trip going to from your country going to Samoa Australia? Yeah. Wow. I went to Samoa and then a month later I went to Tahiti and Moria and then one month later to New Zealand. But um, I didn't plan much. I had my lonely planet and when I arrived in Samoa I just asked a, a cab driver, can you just take me to a hostel? Mm -hmm. But that didn't really exist there because it's not really a, a rich country. So he took me to a cheap hotel and the people were amazing there. They were just It was run by um, the people who were living there and they only had a few rooms. Mm -hmm. And from there people on the street just helped me out and they told me I'd just go there and there and we became friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole trip Everybody just said, yeah, just go there, go there, you can stay with friends, you can stay there, I can do this, and you avoid the typical tourist traps, and you can see the best places, and you can actually travel very cheap, mm -hmm. but it's also very rich, because you can never buy those experiences, mm -hmm. so that's what I want to do here now. I, I'm actually happy that I lost my, my card, because that was when people from the hostel asked me, yeah, you want to go to a party? And that's not why I'm here. I'm here because I want to meet locals. So in that way, it was a good experience as well that I lost my bank card. That's true. So, what traveling means to you? Finding your freedom back. Mm -hmm. When you have a full-time job and when you have a mortgage and when you have a lot of bills to pay, there's no room for spontaneity. There's no room for freedom. You you only have a very limited amount of. Mm -hmm. Uh, private time that you can just decide what you want but because it's so limited you have to pay for it and from my point of view it's it's more fake when you like mountain biking then you have a few hours a week that you can do that and you can do it only in your area and it still costs a lot of money because you want an expensive bike you want everything good but I prefer a crappy bike while I'm traveling yeah, correct. It's, there's like a lot of more meaning of it like you know you can also like Stop wherever you want to stop. Yeah, the plan for this trip is to have no plan at all. It's like a freedom to yes. do whatever. Nobody has that. Nobody can say just like, yeah, tomorrow I'm going there for a week. Those are nice people. I'm going to stay here for another week right. or for another two weeks. If you have a regular job, you cannot do that. But I can. Sure. So what inspires you to travel? Uh, I want to find a new home. Uh, I don't want to go back home. Um, I want to fall in love with someone or with some place where I can live the way I want because I don't want to live in a traditional way that most people do. I want to live in the middle of nature in a simple house where I can just design, do my art um, and not have many bills and have a lot of time to keep traveling, to spend with my wife and family and friends. So who is the person who inspires you a lot? Uh, probably most of all my uh, Maori family that I met. Um, in Tahiti I met a Maori family and most Polynesians don't like it when you have Polynesian tattoos. So they pretty straightforward ask you just explain. We want to know if you know what's on your body. And after two days I had to leave but they said yeah just come to New Zealand um, and you can stay at our place. And I thought I was going to stay there for a few days, but I ended up going to all kinds of traditional Maori ceremonies. Uh, I spent two and a half months at their house. I had my own car. I had everything. Okay. I, I could never pay for food because mm -hmm. they were offended if I did. Yeah. And he was working at home. He was uh, a traditional Maori carver, a tattoo artist and musician. And in the morning he would just wake up together with his wife, have breakfast, uh, start working. If it was a sunny day and he wanted to go to the beach first and have a swim, then he did that. If groceries needed to be done, that's what he did. Uh, and then he would start carving and if friends came over, he would stop working and spend time with his friends. Uh, if any one of his friends was in trouble, he would just drop his work and just go. And now they actually have a kid together and because of his job and the flexibility of his job, he can just take care of the kid and spend as much time with his wife and his kids as he wants and that way you have a better relationship and 
you show your kids that you want to get to know them and that you're there for them because especially my dad was working a lot so that it, that influenced that relationship and I, I don't want that for my own kids I want to be there and if you just and most people and the job that I was doing in Belgium you just work five or six days a week and you wake up early grumpy because you have to go to work and then you come home and yeah, of course, you're tired, so you just want to sit on the couch, you don't want to cook, and you just want to be left alone or just relax. But in the end, in a relationship, you need to talk, you need to spend time together, and not just time when you're exhausted. I want to spend time together when the sun is shining or when I'm happy. So in the end, I want to find a place where I can live simple, but also that also creates a life to me that... I can spend a lot of time and have a lot of flexibility to spend time with the people that I want. Because that's only going to improve the relationship, that's going to make them more beautiful. You, you value like, how you, val you value your relationship, you value time, and you value um, the good relationship that like, stays strong and stays, you know, forever. So that's, you know, that's really cool because, you know, when, once we don't have that at ourselves, seeing that we don't want to be like that we want to be in our own future and our own happiness together with our new future our future relationship or kids or whatever so you know the house is not a home if it's not happiness yeah because i was studying architecture for a long time and, and design and i love how how i love good architecture and really nice designs and those are mostly the designs that i do but in the end those houses would be would mean that I would have to work the rest of my life not being at the house, not having the flexibility to spend time with people. So in the end, my dream house for myself is a small house, a simple house that's just in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of nature. That gives me that flexibility. So I should advise the people who never travel and want to travel from younger to older generation. First of all, look at the movie Into the Wild. We watched that last night. Yeah. Amazing. Um, this is my Into the Wild, but um, traveling was the best learning school that I ever had. I studied a lot of things, but in the end, um, no matter what you study or how much you know of it, everybody grew up in different situations, every person is so complex and no matter what you study you will never be able to understand that. But when you travel, traveling puts you right back with your feet on the ground. Traveling explains you so much more about every situation all over the world. But you cannot do it by just going to tourist host, uh, hotels, to resorts and everything. Go off the beat track, go talk to locals, try to be scared sometimes. It's the scary things that are the most exciting things. And as long as you don't go to war countries, it's okay. People are willing there to help you. As long as you're not an asshole and if you respect them, people are there for you. They're gonna give you food, they're gonna give you a couch or whatever. So don't be afraid, do it. Be more afraid that you didn't do it. It's then they're done. Thank you, Hans. Um, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I always rem remember the world is our house, countries are our living rooms, lakes, seas, and oceans are swimming pools. So travel safe and bye. Bye.